Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hosea chapter 5 verse 11 as well as James chapter 3 verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word Lord. Bless us, wash us with it Lord God. Help us to walk in your ways. In Jesus name Lord, amen. All right, God help us to hear your word. All right, Hosea chapter 5, verse 11, Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment because he was determined to go after filth. And that word filth, um, it even, it also means like reasoning of the world, um, such as like the way that the world thinks, right? And so um, Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment. Um, and that is um, of God, right? So Ephraim representing the children of Israel is oppressed. Um, they are oppressed by God, by the hand of God um, through other um, surrounding um, cities and kings, right? They were being um, taken in and, and taken over by these kings. And it was because of their own filth, right? Their filth, which was idolatry, um, going after other gods. So it says uh, Ephraim is oppressed, cursed in judgment, meaning um, that as God's judgment is poured out, they are actually cursed in it and not blessed. Um, normally, if if you would you would think of um, being a separate child of God away from the world, those who are called by God, um, when judgment comes down, you would think that they would be exempt from it. But here it's saying um, Ephraim is crushed in judgment, right? So it says Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment because he was determined to go after Phil. So basically he was looking like the world, right? He looked just like what God was trying to set him apart from. And so therefore he received the judgment that he looked like, right? And so it says, because he was determined to go after filth, he was going after it, pursuing it, right? And and not just happening to be around it. No, he was going after this filth. So it says, because he was determined to go after filth. All right, and so this is completed today with James chapter three, verse six. And the tongue is a fire a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. All right. And so it says the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. So um, meaning when you think of a tongue is a fire, just think of, um, like the torch, the wooden torch that the people would have in their hand and it would like be a cloth at the end and they would set that cloth on fire. Then they would go around and light multiple fires, um, light multiple lights at night to, to um, lighten an area, right? So it says, and the tongue is a fire. So um, when I think of that, I see that we're lighting other fires just like when the Holy Spirit came and it was like a, a flame on each person's basically like lighting fires. This tongue is also lighting fires. This tongue is causing the burning down of a, a house, right? So in, in that way, um, this tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness, meaning it can expand to beyond what we think. So if this tongue is a, a fire, a world of unrighteousness is going around starting fires in multiple places. And it says a world of unrighteousness. And that, that reminds you of a fire, right? Because a fire, you don't really know it's in. It just can continue to burn as long as it has a source to burn up. And in that same way, our tongue is like that. You don't really know it's in when you sometimes have a word um, or say something, you think that it's just small, but it can cause a great fire, right? And as long as there's something to kindle, it's going to continue on and on. 
So it says the tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. So it says the tongue is set among our members, meaning all of the members of your body, right? As if they are all equal, but they're saying that the the tongue stands out. Why? Because it, it can stain the whole body. It can stain the eye. It can stain the hand, right? The things that we see, the things that we hear, the things that we touch, um, the, the words that come from our mouth can cause a stain on those things. They can cause a distortion in the way that we operate in those things. And it says setting on fire the entire course of life. Like a, a course can be set or, or turned. It's like a rudder to a ship, right? Just a, a slight turn here or there, right? And, and here it's by the tongue. And so it says, and set on fire by hell, meaning that, you know, the wage of sin is death. So um, thank you, Lord, for Jesus. So yeah, um, and set on fire by hell, the tongue. So um, let's go back to the completion. And it's talking about Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment. Why is Ephraim oppressed and crushed in judgment? Because he was determined to go after filth, meaning um, go after the things of the world, the judgment of the world, um, that he looked like the world, right? He was stained. Um, and, and that can be caused by the tongue, right? The words that we say, the things that are in our heart that are causing, um, one another to go astray. Um, if it's in your heart, it can, it can come out of your mouth. It can come from your tongue, right? And in that way, it can steer you into, um, different paths and that different path for Ephraim would be going after filth, right? Looking like the rest of the world, going after idols, going after things that God has clearly drawn a line and said, don't go past here, right? And because of that, it says Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment, that judgment being the judgment of God. We have to, in this hour, be careful to be chastened in our words um, and not let our tongues lead us into places that we know we should not be, right? Um, listen to that check in the spirit, that check by the Holy Spirit that is trying to get you to come back if you've wandered away. Um, and, and don't be crushed in judgment um, because of something that your tongue has has started, right? Something that has caused your, your ship rudder to, to turn its course. Don't allow your course to be turned by the tongue. Don't allow the tongue to stain the rest of the body. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for forgiveness of sin, Lord God. We all have, have fallen and we all have come short of the glory of God. But we thank you, Jesus, that you are more than able to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Scrub us clean every stain, even the stains of our tongue, Lord God. Where we have fallen, you can lift us up. We love you. We give you all the glory and praise. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God. Forgive me for all of my sins, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who have prayed that prayer and believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth 
meaning he is going to show you the way, um, whether it be in small or in great thoughts, it's, he's going to show you every single answer to the questions that you have in life. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. Um, so give it to him, give him your questions and wait for an answer. Amen. Um, go out, be baptized in Jesus name and make disciples of all men. Don't forsake the fellowshipping over yourselves one to another either. All right. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children as peace. Take care.